Hello everyone, this is Mike History 2 and welcome to part 3 of the imported ancestors of Elizabeth II. So, this is probably going to be my last video before Christmas, so I'd like to wish all of you guys a Merry Christmas and I would like to thank all of you for having stuck around this long. So, as I said, we will continue looking at some of the major and important ancestors of Elizabeth II, some of whom might surprise you. One of these was Frederick I, Holy Roman Emperor, also known as Frederick Barbarossa. He succeeded his father, Frederick II, as Duke of Swabia in 1147 until 1152, after which he became King of Arles in Germany. Three years later, he was crowned as King of Italy on the 24th of April in Pavia and Holy Roman Emperor on the 18th of June by Pope Adrian IV in Rome. In 1156, he also became the Count of Burgundy, and the next year, the name Holy Roman Empire first appeared in the historical records. He was one of the greatest rulers of the time, being ambitious, organized, a great warrior and politician alike. He also ruled for almost 40 years until his death in the Third Crusade in 1190. He was 82% German, 10% French, 7% Italian, and 1% English. Now just as important though was Frederick II, Holy Roman Emperor, who became King of Sicily only 8 years later in 1198 at age 4. In 1212 he became Duke of Swabia, King of Germany, and King of Italy, although he was succeeded by Henry VII of Germany as Duke of Swabia 4 years later. <laughs> Nevertheless, by 1215 he was uncontested as King of Germany. Finally, in 1220 he was crowned Holy Roman Emperor by the Pope. Nevertheless, after this high point, he soon became bitter enemies with the Pope, just as Henry IV before him. It got so bad that he got excommunicated three times and was even called the Antichrist by Pope Gregory IX. Despite this, he was even able to become Jerusalem, King of Jerusalem in 1225 during the Sixth Crusade, although he lost that title only three years later. At his Sicilian court in Palermo, he became a major patron of arts, science, literature, and poetry, and encouraged works in Sicilian instead of Latin, which would have a major influence on Italian later on. After a remarkable reign, he died in 1250, after which the Holy Roman Empire would experience a very long decline. Now just like Henry, he was actually mostly French, being only a quarter German, 15% Italian, 3% Dutch, and a tiny bit Breton. Now an earlier king of Sicily of importance was Roger II of Sicily, who was his first king. He became Count of Sicily in 1105 at age 10. In 1127, he became Duke of Apulia and Calabria, and the next year became Prince of Taranto. Finally, in 1130, he elevated Sicily to a kingdom and was succeeded by his son as Prince of Taranto two years later, and another of his sons as Duke of Apulia and Calabria two years after that. His main achievement was consolidated, was consolidating the different Norman counties in Italy under one government, which had been done by his death in 1154. He was half French through his mother and half his, through his father and half Italian through his mother. Now finally, heading back to England, another major ancestor of hers is Henry I of England, the fourth son of William the Conqueror. After William's death, his two brothers inherited his land with Robert Curthose becoming Duke of Normandy and William II becoming King of England. Suspiciously, he was present when his brother William died in a hunting accident in 1100, after which he succeeded him. Robert invaded the next year in order to dispute the coronation, but eventually accepted Henry as king, but only for a while, because in 1105 and 1106, Henry did a reverse Uno card and invaded Normandy instead, imprisoning Robert at the Battle of Tinchebray. However, his troubles didn't end. Louis VI of France, among others, supported Robert's son William Cleto as a pretender to the throne, and he only crushed this rebellion in 1119. His bad luck continued as the next year his son, William, died in the White Ship disaster while crossing the Channel, and although he took another wife, he had no children. Because of this, he declared his daughter Matilda as his heir and died in 1135. Now, he was 73% French, 19% German, 4% Italian, 3% Breton, only 0.75% English, and 0.25% Dutch. However, Matilda wouldn't succeed her father as queen, since her title was disputed by her cousin Stephen, who I already mentioned before, uh, since he was backed by the church and nobility. In 1139, she crossed into England to take it by force, supported by David I of Scotland, and even captured Stephen two years later, but her attempt to get crowned at Westminster failed due to bitter opposition from the people, and so because of this, she was titled Lady of the English instead of Queen. 
and that winter she was trapped in Oxford Castle by Stephen's army, and to avoid capture had to cross the frozen Thames River at night. After a long stalemate in 1148, she gave up and returned to Normandy, leaving her son, Henry, to continue the campaign, and finally dying in 1167. Now she was 36.5% French, a quarter English, a quarter Scottish, 9.5% German, 2% Italian, and 1.5% Breton. Now Henry II was appointed Duke of Normandy in 1150 by Louis VII of France, and the following year became Count of Anjou in Maine after his father's death. In 1152 he became Duke of Aquitaine along with his wife Eleanor of Aquitaine, who had actually been King Louis's former wife. Continuing his mother's war against Stephen to claim the throne, they made a settlement in 1153 with the Treaty of Wallingford, and the following year Stephen died, making Henry the uncontested King of England. As king, he consolidated his conquest of Wales, as well as his territory in Anjou, Maine, and Touraine. However, his attempt to reform the relationship between church and state led to arguments with Thomas Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and ended with his murder in 1170. Now, he also had conflicts with Louis VII of France, which resulted in his conquest of Brittany and advances into central and southern France. However, France struck back by supporting his son's rebellions against him, led by Henry the Young King and his brothers Richard and Geoffrey in 1173. They were also supported by Scotland, Flanders, Brittany, and Boulogne. Although the rebellion was crushed, young Henry rebelled again ten years later, which resulted in his death. However, in order to not anger the rest of his sons, Henry invaded Ireland to give land to his son, John. However, his children still weren't satisfied, and by 1189, young Henry and Geoffrey were dead, but Richard was still unsatisfied, and with King Philip II of France's help, he defeated his father and became king, with Henry dying not long after. Now, Henry was two-thirds French, an eighth English, an eighth Scottish, 7.75% German, 1% Italian, and 0.75% Breton. Now, his wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine, was just as famous. She became Duchess of Aquitaine and Countess of Poitiers at age 15 after her father's death. Three months later, she married Louis, the son of King Louis VI of France, and only days later he succeeded his father as King of France. As Queen, she participated in the Second Crusade, but soon after tried to divorce Louis, which was rejected by Pope Eugene III. However, Louis himself eventually agreed after 15 years of marriage since they couldn't have a son, and they separated in 1152. However, only days later she became engaged to Henry, the Duke of Normandy, and married him less than two months later, becoming Queen of England in 1154. However, even this marriage didn't go well, and she was imprisoned in 1173 for supporting young Henry's rebellion, and wouldn't be released until Richard succeeded his father as king. Although no longer queen, she lived until 1204 as a powerful patron of literary figures, and as for ancestry, she was 98.5% French and 1.5% German. Now, when she died, the king of this time was John, who was the first lord of Ireland. He had succeeded his brother Richard I as king of England, duke of Normandy, count of Maine, duke of Aquitaine, and count of Poitou in 1199. Although at first he signed the Treaty of Le Goulet in 1200 with King Philip II, in which Philip recognized John's authority over much of France, they went to war only two years later. And due to a lack of resources and his treatment of French nobles, he lost his territory in Poitou, Normandy, and Maine. 1204, although he did become Count of Angoulême. He spent much of the next decade trying to reconquer his lands by creating alliances, raising money, and reforming the judicial system. He tried to defeat Philip in 1214, but after Philip's defeat of his allies at Bouvines, he failed and faced a rebellion known as the First Barons' War. Now, this led to the signing of the famous Magna Carta in 1215, which was an early step in the Constitution of the United Kingdom, and for the first time limited the king's rights although it would take a while before this treaty was actually followed. During the war, he died of dysentery in 1216, and he was 81.5% French, 6.5% English, 6.25% Scottish, 4.7% 75% German, and a bit of Italian and Breton. So now moving on to King Philip II himself. He was also another major ancestor of Elizabeth, and believed or not, was actually the first king of France. Now what do I mean by this? Now he became king of the Franks in 1180, but ten years later dropped that title and instead referred to himself as King of France for the first time in history. In 1209 he began the Albigensian Crusade to defeat the Christian sect known as Cathars in southern France, which not only helped end that denomination eventually, but also strengthened his control over the region. Now by defeating 
King John's rivals at the Battle of Bouvines in 1214, he managed to take large parts of modern-day France back from his control. Under his rule, France became the richest and strongest country in Europe. And he used this to build a wall around Paris, restore financial stability, and reorganize the government before his death in 1223. However, he was only 44% French, actually the rest being 36.25% German, 7.5% Italian, 4.75% Dutch, 3% Russian, 1.5% Swedish, 1.5% Sorb, 1% Breton, and 0.5% English. Now, his grandson, Louis IX of France, is the most famous Capetian, becoming king at age 12 in 1226. His mother, Blanche of Castile, ruled the country until he reached maturity, defeated rebellious vassals, and finally completed the Albigensian Crusade. And once in power, Louis had to deal with the rebellions by his more powerful nobles, while also dealing with Henry III of England's attempts to reconquer former English vassals. But he was defeated at the Battle of Taillebourg, and France conquered Aquitaine, Maine, and Provence. Under his rule, France achieved a golden age as it reached its political and economic peak, and Louis gained a lot of prestige for his skill in battle as well as fairness and moral integrity. He developed a French royal judicial system, which made him the supreme judge to whom anyone could appeal for the amendment of a judgment and other changes including banning trials by ordeal and introducing the presumption of innocence. In addition to this, he is also one of the most famous crusaders, leading both the 7th and 8th crusades, but both failed, being captured in the 7th and dying of dysentery during the 8th in 1270. And for his efforts, he became the only king of France to become canonized as a saint. He was only 60.75% French, with the rest being 20.75% German, 7.75% Spanish, 4% Italian, 1.5% English, 1.5% Scottish, 1.25% Dutch, 0.75% Russian, 0.5% Swedish, 0.5% Sorb, 0.5% Breton, and 0.25% Catalan. And as you'll see, as we go down, further down the line in history and we get more detailed information on ancestry, you'll see that some of these European monarchs really had a lot of different kinds of blood in them anyways thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something new and don't forget to subscribe to see more content bye